Joining us now from the great state of South Carolina, Senator Tim Scott. Senator, I, I'm a, look, I'm not great with math. You know that. It, I added up the time. I saw a summary of the of the different talking times that the candidates had. You were third from the bottom in terms of talking time. Yes. And some of your opponents had almost five minutes longer than you did. Five minutes in front of 12 million people. So how do you as a candidate decide when to follow the rules, when to respect what the moderators are trying to do, and when to just say, you know what, I'm going to do what everybody else is doing and blow right through all the stop signs? Well, Trey, that's a great question. And, and it was answered for me the next night in New Hampshire. I did a town hall with a couple hundred people. And the first four or five questions was, don't you yo-yos know that the more time you spend yelling at each other, the more likely you are to elect Joe Biden? The two groups that benefited the most from that chaos, that food fight on the stage the media, who loves to see Republicans attacking Republicans, and Joe Biden's campaign. Trying to be the adult in the room does not get you more time. Actually, insulting more people, having less to say, but saying it really loud gets you more time, more points, but it actually improves the chances of Joe Biden being the next president of the United States. All right. I, I will give you one other observation. I, I, I think sometimes people mistake decency and kindness for a lack of resolve. Sometimes people confuse fighting with being cruel. Is there a place for a happy warrior, warrior in modern day politics? Can you be a rule follower, uh, be fair in your critiques and still be successful in politics? Oh, absolutely. You can, certainly. As you know, Trey, I, I grew up in some really tough neighborhoods. You've got to be tough to get out of the neighborhoods that I grew up in. The question I keep asking myself, is tough enough? And for the Republican Party, the answer is really clear. We've lost seven out of the last eight national elections, and 2022 was a disaster. If tough and loud was enough, we'd be winning election after election after election. But our results have unfortunately been exactly the opposite. I think it is time for an optimistic, positive message anchored in conservatism with a backbone. Uh, the more you push me, the tougher I get. That's good news from my perspective for the next president of the United States. I look forward to having more conversations, more opportunities to talk about the issues that people in Iowa and New Hampshire are talking about. They're talking about every county being border county because our southern border is unsafe, insecure, and wide open. They want a president more concerned about saving 70,000 lives from fentanyl in a single year than having a food fight on a debate stage. They want a president who will back the blue and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with China. It is not the strength of China that is the problem. It's the weakness of Joe Biden, and the American people will Ask the question, who can get the job done? The answer is Tim Scott. And you can go to VoteTimScott.com to chip in and learn more about my candidacy. All right, let me ask you about an issue that's important to many, many, many GOP primary voters. But there are, there are differences of opinion. I, I can't speak for anybody else watching, but the GOP position on life confuses me. Uh, for decades, it was let the states decide, and now it seems like the position is let some of the states decide, but let the feds decide for other. So what is the, it, it, am I right that there are differences among the eight of you on that stage, including President Trump, on the issue of life, and do those differences make a difference? Well, Trey, the loudest voices in the debate were the quietest voices on the issue of life. Protecting life on the federal level with a 15 week limit is in America's best interest and it reflects our declaration of independence that says our creator gave us inalienable rights, including the right to life. So if we are gonna allow California, New York, and Illinois to have abortion on demand up until the day of birth, 
shouting from the mountaintops about issues that do not matter and then being quiet like a church mouse on the debate stage on the issues that are relevant to our primary voters and frankly to a party based on freedom to deny that freedom and not stand for life as three of the candidates did on the debate stage. That's that's a shame. And the shouting and screaming about nothing and then being quiet about something does not reflect the kind of leadership that will get the job done. All right, I'm going to let you go with this. I think the next debate's in about a month. By my calculations, yes. you were third from the bottom and, and, and five minutes behind the front runner. Uh, will Tim Scott kind of reclaim some of that five minutes and try to make the playing <laughs> field a little bit level out in California? Well, there's no doubt I will, number one. Number two, what I've learned uh, during that debate is that following the rules is a good thing. If everybody's following the rules, it's a really bad thing. If you want to talk about the issues, don't listen to the little bell when it goes off. Run right by it and continue to talk, not shout, but talk about the important issues facing the American people. We should have had 30 minute conversation about how the Biden economy is devastating American families instead of doing that, it was like they had a rap show up there led by a candidate. Instead of talking about the devastation of the loss of thousands of dollars of spending power, we had name calling between the candidates. Instead of talking about the devastating impact of a mental health crisis on our country, we had conversations about so little. 